we come to you with breaking news. Break, breaking news. It's it's so Jover. It's Jover. <laughs> I know you come to Sensor Noise for the latest political news, specifically. Uh, but as as we record this, approximately uh, fifteen minutes ago, uh, yeah. Joe dropped out. So we we were literally about to about to click record and it happened and delayed us for 15 minutes basically <laughs> <laughs> moods moods are good today this is good news and then and then we had to reboot our computers 15 times to get the recording right. to work yeah um, you know, we're here it's now. really it's really awesome how <laughs> all applications are just in a web browser now. It, they're yeah. so reliable and good to use. It's it's what's really cool is that we put like massively powerful processors on our computer and then we just don't use them for that cuz we just get it all from over the internet. So right. Yeah. It's it's really cool. every computer could be a thin client these days. Sun 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 Microsystems was on to something. Sun, something Sun was like right. <laughs> They were they were on it. Uh, I'm Andrew, joined as always by my co-host Arthur. This week is uh, Big Canon Week. Um, not Canon in the sense of like Canon or non-Canon, but Canon is in the the camera company because um, they did two big announcements today. But before we get into that, some Lego news. <laughs> Love uh, you Lego. can. You can buy a, a custom Lego set of the uh, B&H Superstore if you want. Um, it's 297 yep. pieces. Uh, it's made for the uh, B&H 50th anniversary. Um, basically, now, uh, it, I guess what they did is they like uh, they made sort of pr- screen printed on Legos themselves. So Yeah, it looks like that's what they've done because there's no way yeah. this is... Uh official no. merchandise yes. right now what they do have is employees and a bnh bag they have a bnh bag i love that they even like have a, a pos system yeah in here um they didn't screen print on the camera blocks which i i you know i feel like they should have put like a nikon on top of one of them or something but you know anyway um yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't comments. know. Man. There's this only is... two. There's only two comments, and they're not very, <laughs> not very supportive. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're not. Yeah, whatever. I think it's neat. I won't be buying it because I don't need it, but I think it's neat. Uh, whatever. Uh, also, Google did a thing. Um, yeah, take a what? Take a yeah. look at this. Um. So what they did is they basically said camera bump. <laughs> we'll show you a camera bump. So Google Google is like Google is like really bad at uh keeping anything a secret. So they yeah. like they hold events like Apple does or Samsung does to announce their phones. And they basically just leak them on purpose in advance. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, I don't really understand this strategy, but anyways, they've basically leaked their Pixel 9 Pro. And yeah. wouldn't you know it, the camera bump is even larger. It's absolutely enormous. Yeah. It it goes the entire width of the phone. It looks it like the entire width of the phone. It looks like it's a good half centimeter thick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, and and it's tall too. It's like Yeah. I don't know. It's it seems like it's as tall as the iPhone camera bump, and then just the entire width of the phone, and then five centimeters thick. Like this is yeah huge. I guess this is how you got to do it, though. I don't know if you recall from like the bad old days, you know, but but like I had a, a Droid X, and it had a massive camera bump. Um, oh yeah, and like the Lumias that had really high res, or the Nokias that had really high res cameras had really big camera bumps. I feel like this is just sort of like. As the desire for better and better cameras in phones continues, the camera bumps will just have to get larger and larger because there are, you know, you can only make a a, a camera so small, uh, you know, and, yeah. and get a get an appropriate amount of detail out of it. So yeah, it's just okay. Uh, this they may be an unpopular put a whole, opinion. 
They should just put a one inch sensor on the back of the thing. No, 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 no. This this is my <laughs> unpopular take, I think. Oh. If you're going to do this, right, if you're going to have this giant camera bump, you should just make the phone thicker. Mm. Yeah, Sim- so that simply it's make the phone thicker and have a bigger battery in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, what we really want is for it to sit unevenly on a table and like rock <sighs> around as well. Or do the thing. Remember the remember the shape of like the iPhone 3GS where it was like nice uh, and curved and fit in your hand real nice. Yeah. They should do yeah. that. Yeah. No, we see the thing is cameras or, or phones shouldn't be comfortable to hold anymore. They should just be like <sighs> Yeah. They should just be like peerless black slabs, you know. They should they're all the current design language is basically what if it was the monolith from 2001 a space odyssey <laughs> naked robotic core they call it yeah mm-hmm. I-, I miss the uh the iphone battery case did you ever have one of those i did yes i missed that it was yeah. huge but it made the phone feel real nice to hold it was very nicely curved had a good yeah. weight to it mm-hmm. and then it didn't rock around on the table it's great yeah yeah Boy, those those were the days, huh? But I'm assuming that, you know, the next iPhone will be more of the same. They're just going to make the camera bump even bigger because that's what we keep doing. Yeah. Although probably. at least iPhones. Unless we trying... elect someone who will put a stop to this. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's Kamala's plan to? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What's... <laughs> I do think it's interesting. I guess they've had. So they have the nine Google Pixel Nine Pro Fold. Uh, yeah, they, they got a folding one to too. Things. They had a folding one last time, right? But this is like, yeah, it, it's, it was just folding phones Pixel are getting fold, serious. Yeah. yeah, they're getting serious, but on it, like, does anybody buy these things? Some people. I've do. never seen somebody with one in real life. In theory, I'm interested in them, but not in the kind that like folds open to be a tablet, like folds open like. Uh, hot dog style or however you want to call it, you know, vertically yeah. to make a real big screen. I prefer the like Motorola Razor type where it's, uh, you know, basically like a flip phone from the olden days and you open it up and get a, the whole screen. I don't, I don't need a bigger screen than I already have on the phone, you know? Yeah. I don't, but that I don't seems find to be myself... what most of the folding phones are, are doing is it's like, Oh, you open it up and you have like a whole tablet thing. And it's like, Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Why would I want? So what I'm yeah. getting is a a phone that's uncomfortable to use, and then a a, a tablet that has a, a line down the middle of the screen. Mm-hmm. Yes. It doesn't correct. seem like it's good at either thing. I'm much. I'm much more. I'm like the. Uh, what's the gal? The Samsung one that's the flip. The the Z Flip. The Z. Is it the, the one Z that's fl- like yeah, a Moto Razor flip. type Not thing? the Z Fold, the Z Flip, yes. That that I more am, that I appreciate, I think. Yeah. I feel like that's more what I want. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. take up less space in my pocket, but still have a screen that's big enough to, like, do something with. Right. I don't know. This, I don't understand them. Yeah. Man, I've got what? one more news item here, and it's not so much oh, a yes. news item, it's related to our... Uh, Related to our discussions about film photography and film scanning for the past couple of weeks, yeah. uh, 404 Media, if you're not a, uh, if you don't know those guys, they used to be the motherboard column at Vice and they made their own uh, news website. They are fantastic and I highly recommend subscribing. But uh, Jason Kevler over there has also embarked on his own uh, film taking and film developing and scanning journey. And mm-hmm. it's just interesting to see his process. He has yeah. he has not uh, gone the route you have. He does not have a film scanner. No. He has set up. He, he's done something interesting. He has a Sony A6000 with a mm-hmm. macro lens. Mm-hmm. And he's got what looks like a little 3D printed thing that you can slide the film through one frame at yep, a time. Yep. Yep. Put that on top of a light, like, light box under that. And then he's using... Um, like uh, Elgato, he's got a, like a capture card to capture the output from the camera, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Or maybe he's just using that to line it up and then take a picture. I can't tell. Yeah. 
That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about yeah. using a capture card. I've yeah, I've tried this. It's basically DSLR scanning. Uh, yeah, as is the general method. Um, and yeah, the basic idea is like you use a a, fu- a a camera and you like do like tethered capture or whatever into Lightroom. Yeah, and then you can use Negative Lab Pro plugin to basically you know invert the colors and all that and polish it up. Um, if you do it right, you can you can like get through a whole roll uh, fairly quickly, you know, because you can right. just do click 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 click. But you know, setting I would say setting it up is the the big time uh, suck here because yeah. you have to get the copy stand for your camera, and then you gotta have the light uh source and you got to line it all up just so you know and uh and then you don't yeah. you don't get any like digital ice or anything right if you do it uh that no you don't no yeah digital ice requires infrared light um i mean maybe yeah. it doesn't matter so I it's don't know. i feel like it's just as fiddly as all the other kinds of scanning you know yeah. just in a different way um yeah i don't know but it's another it's another place that's just highlighting how there is no film scanner available. Right. And there yeah. really should be. Yes. The, like, this is a problem that I feel like could be solved pretty easily. And it uh, was. And a decent it was solved. For it. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. It was solved 20 years ago, and we just stopped making them. Well, anyway. Yeah. It's, um, it's canon news. It's uh, canon week. Canon uh, has a couple things that they've come out with here. Um, the first, and I think most important for, well, for Canon really, is the R1, which is the 1DX replacement. The flagship, their words. Yeah. They're calling this their flagship. Um, now, don't get this confused with the R3 that came out a couple years ago that looks exactly the same. Yeah, because um, that wasn't a. <laughs> There's side by side pictures of them, and they are, yeah, remarkably similar. That that um, was not a flagship, and this is a flagship. So don't. And get the it, way that you can tell if, that this is a flagship is because it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, six thousand two hundred ninety nine. Uh, yeah, which, which is makes it the most expensive of the yeah um, of the it's, flagships. It's more than a Z nine. It's more than a Sony A nine. Um, yeah, and for less megapixels than both of those, this is a flagship camera in 2024 that has a 24 megapixel main sensor. Now, and in in theory, in theory, uh, whatever, it's fine, right? Yeah. This is this is for sports. Like this That's camera, what it's it's for sports photographers. It's like. It's coming out right now specifically because of the Olympics. They're trying to get this in the hands of Olympic photographers. Yeah. And they probably have already seated them with it because people are going to be there already. Right. But yeah. this is this is why. Um, mm-hmm. And for those people, you know, you're getting your fo- you're taking photos and you're putting them in a magazine or you're putting them on a, on a news website. Twenty four megapixels is plenty. Right. It's fine yeah. for the use case, but it's very specific for that use case. And this has, you know, uh, it, it has uh, uh, eye controlled autofocus. It can do uh, forty frames per second uh, with the electronic shutter, twelve with the mechanical shutter. So, you know, you can for sports. It's yeah, makes a lot of sense. Should mention also um, that the R three also has the IAF. Yeah, which I think what's interesting, and there's confusing. an article that we'll be discussing later that like. This is flagship, but it's clearly very niche, which is interesting choice to to go with your flagship camera. Well, um, I think that these these big ones, the ones with the integrated grip, have always been fairly niche. Yeah, they're always they've always been only for photos and only for professionals. Mm-hmm. Nikon, I mean, the Z9, I shouldn't have one, right? It's not really meant for me. <laughs> yeah. They want me to buy a Z8. That's really what I should have done, but the Z8 didn't exist when I bought mine, so here we are. Yeah. But those, right. the the full, the big, big boys are always, they're always niche. That's like the point of them. They should cater to the professionals. Mm-hmm. 
but in this case, like in the past, Canon has had a big advantage because their their market is well seated. Like this professional market, everyone uses Canon, or they used to. They had all sorts of Canon glass, so whenever the you know one DX three came out, they just bought that and used their existing lenses, and they're already good to go. Right, but they're requiring. I mean, this is the new RF mount, which doesn't really have that many lenses still, and there's no third party lenses, and so you have to get rid of all your glass and buy all new in order to go to this. Yeah, and a lot of those guys yeah. have already gone to Sony because they're so late. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's uh it's interesting, you know. Yeah. And we'll discuss that a little more. But possibly so they, and I think the more interesting announcement, unless you have anything else on the R one. Oh, it's just it can do forty FPS, which is good. Okay. <laughs> uh has a thousand frame buffer, which is also pretty good. Yeah. Speaking okay, I wanna buffers. What what buffers. is this crap? In the cameras, they're always like, oh, we've got a, you know, 1,000 frame, 500 frame buffer. It's like, can't you just put a bigger flash chip in there? Like, what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know if they're using, like, flash necessarily, if it's, like, a RAM, you know. Even if it's but, RAM. RAM yeah. is cheap. Just put some more in. I don't know. Well, yeah. You would think. Um, it can do 6K video. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is pretty good. Um, it can do C log, which I guess some people care about, but mm. I don't think this is not a video camera. Like you're not buying this for video, right? No way. Yeah, I mean, you now shouldn't. the next one that we want to talk about, the second announcement, is uh, a bit more video focused. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, the R five R five Mark II. Um. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, from like the lensrental.com, I think the R5 was their their most popular rented camera. So, um, yeah, you know, this is obviously a big one. Um, so it's basically four years after the original R5. This goes with the um, this this is what the 5D replacement. Yeah, pretty much. And and the 5D was extremely popular even among professionals. So this mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So this is a 45 megapixel stacked full frame sensor, yeah. backside illuminated. It's a big boy. Uh, it includes a new AI technology for upscaling, denoising, and autofocus performance. Uh, of course it does. Uh, the upscaling can push <laughs> the 45 megapixel files up to 179. No, this isn't pixel shift. It's AI upscaling. Worth noting, it only applies to JPEG files. So... It's sort of hallucinating a larger picture for you, I guess. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, autofocus system is faster. can shoot 30 frames per second uh, with electronic shutter. Uh, other than that, it's more of what you would expect. You know, got a yeah, CF Express and an a SD card slot. It's an R5. Um, it has eye control AF. Uh, yeah. Um, but this actually seems like a meaningful improvement over the original R5. So, yeah, it, it really does. Um, it's actually like a usable thing now, and it's going yeah. directly against the Z8. Like, that's exactly who they have to compete with. Right. And this one, uh, is an, uh, a proper hybrid camera in that can do 8K 30p, uh, raw now, and HDR, 4K 60. <laughs> yes. Has a full extent. size HDMI port. That is nice. Recording. It really yeah. should do that more. Yeah. It does have IAF as well, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. nice. I wish more. Does Canon have a, do they have a, a patent on that or something? If they did, it would have expired long ago. Cause like my, my Elon seven E had eye control AF, you know, right. and that thing's more than 20 years old. So yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just that like, I feel like it's not, I don't know if people just don't use it so that it's not actually that in, in that high of demand or what, but I don't know. It seems it's like especially too, that, for sports, it's super useful. You would think, right? Because you don't have to use the little joystick or whatever. You just look at what you want to focus on. Or um, trust the action modes. I was watching um, some of the videos on this, and it has these like action tracking modes 
and you yeah. can like tell it what sport you're looking at and it's mm-hmm. supposed to be able to follow the action with its focus right so like if you set it to basketball mode it will like focus on whoever has the ball ideally mm-hmm. doesn't work mm-hmm. particularly well yeah but you know just looking at the person who has the ball would work fine yeah What's interesting too is it has a uh, a new optional vertical grip that has an integrated cooling fan to help extend yeah, recording time. Yeah, and boy howdy will you need it because yeah. I was watching a video about the video recording on this and even in 4K it overheated at 28 minutes. Oh so, geez. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Canon they Goodness. still have not solved the overheating while recording video problem on these things. Yeah. Which uh, for a company like Canon is astounding to me because don't they make like cinema cameras? They do. Isn't that yeah. one of their things that they do? Yeah. And as so far as I know, the cinema know how to cameras make camera don't have issues with, auto, with overheating, but yeah. No, I don't, I don't think they do. Yeah. I don't know. You'd figure they'd be able to it's a weird one. do that. Maybe, maybe make the bodies out of, you know, more metal, I guess. I think they do. Like the bodies are a huge heat sink. It's just not enough. Yeah. I mean, the the vertical grip with the fan is pretty funny. So, like, in in this camera, they've integrated a duct, like a cooling duct. (laughs) And for, by the way, $750 for this Mm, grip. For for Um, a fan, yeah. There's a grip that has an extra battery and a cooling fan in it that blows through the little duct. Three three optional grips. Uh, The BGR20, $350, is a typical vertical grip. Grip, while the BGR20 EP 500 bucks includes an Ethernet port, rounding out the trio is the CFR20 EP 400 bucks as a cooling fan in addition to an Ethernet port, but doesn't offer extra power. It is not a battery grip. Right. The cooling fan grip also doesn't have vertical controls. It really is, is just for keeping the camera cool so it can record video for longer. Yeah. I feel like you can buy like a a camera cooling fan from Ulanzi for like 50 bucks or whatever, you know. Right. Well, and someone's uh, going to copy this grip and make, you know, a cheap version of it pretty quickly, I'm sure. Yeah, of course they are. Or something that hooks into that duct, but yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Um now reception, for price, uh this is $800 more than the Z8. Okay. Worth worth saying, which is the Z8's already expensive and this What do is, you yeah, what, than that. why do you think Canon is charging a premium over its competition? Because to me, that seems I foolish at this point. I do not know. Yeah, because to me, this doesn't seem like better than a Z8 or, you know, whatever. I guess an A7 is probably the competitor from. Sony yeah, it would for be this. an A7. Um, well, no, I mean. Yeah, 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 A7, A7R, I guess, because it's the A7R, higher megapixel yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's like I wouldn't pay a premium for it because it doesn't seem like it's better in any sort of way. You know, I don't know. I mean, in the past, you would say you're paying a premium for their lens lineup. Mm-hmm. That would be their argument. You know, in the early day, like in the DSLR days, right? But that's not really a factor anymore. No, it's not, especially because they don't have third-party lenses. And they have, yeah. like, the smallest catalog of first-party lenses of any of the companies. Yeah. So... Well, it's, you know, it's interesting you say that because there was a, another article this week um, <laughs> in which they said that they are developing new RF lenses, quote, no one can imagine yet, unquote. <laughs> Did they did they hire Trump? Like what? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I feel folks, like lenses are, folks, are fairly making lenses. They're unbelievable. <laughs> Not many know this. Um, I feel like we. I feel like I can imagine lots of lenses. You know. Yeah. And like, like, are they like? What's a new t- you know a lens that no one can imagine yet? Like maybe I'm I mean they're too literally, they're but, saying that you know. their example of this is the twenty four to one hundred five two point eight. Okay, that's their example because yeah. well you see it's the only twenty four to one hundred five uh two point eight on the market. Um, is that true? I don't think that's true. Uh, they say it is. I, I right. think it is. Nobody makes a that's a weird length to make. I was going to say that is a weird length. Like mine is mine is what the like 35 to 150. So, yeah. you know, 
Well, what they're what they're saying you can do with so the twenty four to one hundred five. Yeah. They're saying you can, like, if you're a wedding photographer, you don't need two cameras anymore because you can okay. just carry this one, and that covers. I mean, your, normally, a wedding photographer will have the twenty four to seventy and the seventy two hundred. Yeah, yeah, but this isn't really the same. Like two hundred is okay. more than one hundred and five. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, right. I don't know. If that's what they're suggesting, then that just means that zoom lens supremacy is real and everything will be a zoom lens and you won't have prime lenses anymore. (laughs) So (laughs) eventually we'll just have like a nine to 600 millimeter F2 to (laughs) 2.8 and it'll cost, you know, 32 grand. (laughs) But like if they could actually do that, you know? Yeah. Well, sure. (laughs) One of the common lens to rule them all. But can they make a seven hundred dollar twenty four to seventy? <laughs> <laughs> Tamron yeah. certainly can, and it's really good. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Nobody. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very confused by their strategy here. I don't really. I I don't know what you're paying for when you buy this. I, I really you don't. are not the only one confused about their strategy here. Uh, the folks at Petapixel were also confused. Uh, article here that says the Canon R1 feels rushed, even with three additional development years. Yeah, because uh, it really doesn't seem noticed. like I've like we said. It really doesn't seem different from the R3. Yeah, it really looks the same. The uh, firmware feels unfinished. The actual amount of hardware absur- uh, available is sort of TBD. Yeah. Uh, unknown quantities. Uh, don't know how bright the EVF is. You know, uh, all sorts of other specs that Canon like just didn't provide to them. Apparently, um, they only got three and a half hours to use the camera at the launch event in Phoenix, uh, which is yeah, that doesn't seem lot. like enough. How are you supposed um, to write a review on three hours of experience? Yeah, and like so, who's Here's the thing, right? They want to get this out to to go to the Olympics, like I had said. Who is going to take a camera that the firmware doesn't work? Right. To the Olympics. Yeah. Like you're going to trust this with your critical Olympic photo shoots? Hell no. Well, and also uh in in a another article entitled uh Canon doesn't win on price technology or public opinion, which is, uh, yeah, quite an own. Um, This article mentions that, you know, a a lot of these, like, you know, especially like photojournalist types, they get their cameras from their employer, you know, like Reuters or whatever, who who by and large have signed deals with Sony already, you know? Right, because they're so late. Yeah, exactly. So I don't the know. A9, like, they didn't rush fast enough, I guess. <laughs> no, they. Well, the A nine uh, came out. I think before. Uh, yeah, it was before the the twenty. The twenty twenty Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, the A nine. Well, no, it was initially in May twenty seventeen. Like the A nine, they got out early, early with the like real one. Yeah. And immediately people started using them because they were already using A7s. So, yeah. Yeah. They, I don't know what they're doing here. They probably yeah. should have not killed the good camera, the little ones, the M series. Yes. Um, <laughs> what this Petapixel article, uh, you know, Canada doesn't want on price technology or public opinion. They basically, you know, Said on Tuesday morning, but day before the R1 was, was announced, I was finalizing our coverage, looking over the materials Canon prepared. The Canon EOS R1 is ahead of the game. A header in the press release promised. I scratched my head in confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you basically can say anything that, like, you want. <laughs> basically, notes that for a flagship compared to the other flagships, the R1 is 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 too niche, you know, yeah. by comparison. Um, but also like the price, you know, it is. Uh, more than a Sony A93 with its global shutter, more than a Z9 with its high resolution sensor, nearly as expensive as the Alpha One. You know, yeah. This has been true the entire time that the Canon mirrorlesses have been out. They have right. always been more expensive than their competitors. Yeah, and I guess By the value proposition 
the value proposition was supposed to be like, oh, you know, it's, it's Canon. You're getting Canon technology. But the thing is that Canon has not kept up in the mirrorless, no. uh, you know, market like they did in DSLRs. So it, it seems like they they sort of kind of won the top end of DSLRs with the, you know, the EOS 1D series. And then they just didn't follow that up. No, basically. They, they uh, didn't. Uh, yeah. And they're still not letting everyone make uh, RF lenses. Canon's business strategy in the mirrorless era has resulted in high prices and worse technology, and photographers have noticed and sentiment has shifted, whether it's a lockdown RF mount. Yep. Uh, Canon is the only company that chose to close its mirrorless mount, forcing photographers to buy expensive lenses. The company asking you to buy new cameras to use its newest lenses aperture rings uh, or other things that all adds up. So... The result is a brand that feels like it is squeezing its customers for every last cent. Uh, so yeah, they're they're doing, and they did layoffs, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago too. Right, Canon did. So they're kind of floundering. I feel like it feels I like was they don't really know. Talking with a friend and professional photographer doing. last week, I asked him to tell me the last time he was excited about a Canon camera after the five D Mark III. He paused for a while before saying he thought the original R five was pretty good. <laughs> but over 22 years he could only name one camera <laughs> yeah, yeah right and i would agree that the canon you know uh dslrs and even the film slrs are very good cameras but they like, are i don't know yeah i don't know they don't i don't know just i'm not that excited i feel like my nikon my nikon zf admittedly a niche camera is pretty good <laughs> yep you know and I, I don't feel any temptation over to the canon Side of and things. then here's the the killer for them. Apparently, this year, from January to March, they their operating profit declined five percent. In the in midst a time of when market, camera sales are are going up, yeah, yeah, everybody's buying cameras, and Canon is the only one who is making less money. Yeah, uh, oops, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I hope they're going to make changes, but. I don't necessarily have a lot of confidence. Anyway, uh, yeah. So their conclusion is uh, the R five two is pretty good. R one, eh, yeah, but R five two pretty good. As long as you're um, not recording video for more than twenty eight minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't tried either of these cameras. They did have a like a Canon hands on event. Yeah, at one of the camera stores last week, but I was busy. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I know how I feel about Canon cameras generally. So <laughs> it's the, yeah. always really rushing to get, you know, I don't know. You know, it's their mirrorless that I don't feel good about. The SLRs are fine. I don't have any problem with them. Yeah. Or the M M series. Those are also good. Right. Yeah. But it's interesting now, like we have, we have a bunch of friends who are starting to buy cameras again. They're like asking me what they should get. Mm -hmm. And never is can they're like oh i had a you know i had a rebel back in the day what's good now it's like not canon yeah not a rebel don't yeah. don't buy if they don't have an equivalent to get people in yeah yeah it's you know like really like can you you know recommend to someone an r50 you know no. like i feel like not really yeah but i so. can recommend you know a z50 because a yeah. z50 uh, you can use that glass if you decide to upgrade to a Z5 or a Z6, right? And you, and you can get some pretty cheap glass for it, yeah, third-party glass. That's that's pretty good, you know. A, a lot of these Chinese lens makers are making pretty good lenses for pretty cheap, and the RF is just completely left out of that conversation, basically. Yeah, or even the cheap Sony ones. There's tons of those. I feel like they really shot themselves in the foot with that decision, particularly. Yeah, and they like, yeah, they really. rolled it back a little, but yeah. Tamron and Sigma are only allowed to make lenses for APS-C, not for yeah, Vulcan. which is yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, there's that thing where where you can't once something is out in the market, you can't uh, pull it back. You can only make it worse. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen now is it's just going to be a ton of really bad unlicensed RF lenses. Right. That's what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. 
Well, I'm sure there's some already that like, you know, are like manual focus fit, fit in the mechanical. Oh, mount, of course, you know, but are, don't. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, good luck to them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if you're, if you're a professional photographer and you're rushing out to buy an R1, write in and tell us why. <laughs> yeah, let us know. <laughs> I did ask, you know, I have a friend who has an R5. Yeah. And I said, are you going to get an R1? And he just said, <laughs> he just said, no. <laughs> he said, a Mark II, maybe. Yeah, you know. maybe. It's not but a no, super compelling no. upgrade if you just do photos, though. Right. Yeah. So, Especially if you don't do sports. Anyway, that's your Canon update for this Canon week. Update. This has been the official Canon podcast. <laughs> oh, God. I now you Canon, know. if you want to send us an R one, uh, you know, we'll take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. reverse I'll take what a rev- I said. I'll take a review here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll gladly provide my actual unbiased feedback if it's, you know, made available to me. But right. yeah. I mean the other thing we mentioned is the R one isn't even available for like a couple more months. Yeah, no, it's not gonna be available so, for a while. Yeah. Uh might might go try out this is a Nikon demo day coming up. Might go look at the Z six three. Oh yeah. Are those like available now? Uh maybe or soon. I didn't know I if know. they were actually shipping or not. Yeah. I know I see I see the initial oh, review. That was, <laughs> that was Friday. Never mind, I missed it. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Whoops. No, it still yeah. says coming soon, but it's expected availability July twenty sixth, so this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it looks like oh, we should have talked about this. It looks like initial reviews are out uh, as of like, mm. yesterday or the day before. Interesting. Well, what are they Let's saying? See, we what, got, what, what do we got here? AF is good. It's got the oh, they've got the cloud thing in it. Really? Yeah, the Nikon it's... Imaging Cloud Service. Okay. If that works as well as Frame IO, might be worthwhile. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not sure what it's supposed to do exactly. They've uh, yeah, I'm upload full resolution photo world. files right from your camera to your preferred photo storage sites. Huh. Okay. And in the in the uh, icons here, it's got OneDrive, Lightroom, Google Photos, Dropbox. You know. Okay. Hey, if this yeah. can just send pictures directly from my camera to Lightroom, that'd be great. And it ha- oh, automatic updates. <laughs> finally uh. no but seriously <laughs> it says yeah. updates will be installed if the camera is off and connected to an external power source at the, so you specify the time and if you just leave mm. it plugged in it will update itself yeah that's awesome please please <laughs> please bring that to the z9 please i mean it does it looks like a z it looks like a z6 to me like yeah. the same as the other ones, but right, um, a little a little nicer, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm for it. Yep. Now, what I do need Nikon to do, which I've come to realize today again, as I was helping my wife pack for an overseas trip, uh, pancake lenses, please. Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> please. I need That's... those. <laughs> yeah, because they really only have the one. Yeah, and we have the one, and it's fine. But, like, I need more of those, please. <laughs> more pain. A lens that a lens that no one can imagine, a lens so flat, you know, yeah. that's what I'm asking for. Yeah. Like, give me, you remember the thing that Canon Why haven't had? I purchased that pancake lens? It's not, it's not a, that expensive for a new lens. I, I really should just buy it. Like, Nikon, I need you to make a mirrorless equivalent of the Canon EF 50mm 1.8. Please yeah. make that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That I don't lens know why is one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Just make that. Yeah, it's weird because the current currently they only have well they have a macro fifty, but the other fifties are both S lines, you know. So they're quite. Yeah. It's like where's your where's your plain old fifty, you know? And look the the fifty one point eight that I have, it's great. It's really good, but just make a little one. It doesn't have yeah. to be perfect. It just needs to be small. Right. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, the Nikon 26 2.8 is the slimmest and lightest C series lens. Uh, Great. Follow <laughs> no, up on it, this. <laughs> yeah, make more more of this. Yeah. Well, anyway, what have you been when doing uh, hobby wise? What lately? have I been doing? Uh, I, I finally you have shot... a shoot later. I do have a shoot later. Uh, I also finally shot through a full roll in the Pentax 17. So we'll see oh. how all 72 of those frames end up. Um, all right. I how honestly that, don't know. How was that experience? Uh, you know, I found some flaws with the camera design. Yeah, mostly, Uh-oh. you know, the physical design primarily. Um, yeah, sure. One is that the the camera is so small uh, that it is very easy when you go to uh, move the film advance lever with your thumb. It's very easy to accidentally hit the mode selector and switch mm-hmm. it into a mode that you don't want it to be in and, like, not realize it. Um and then the uh, the zone focusing the zone focusing ring is weird because it's like it it clicks solidly in some positions but not in all of them so like it's kind of hard to go by feel you really do have to look at exactly where you know what setting you've got it set to um, and I also just I still don't know if I'm doing the zone focusing right we'll find yeah out. it's kind of hard to tell um, yeah uh, I guess that's the, the big thing really is that I kept finding that I was switching it into a different mode, which was annoying. Um, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. The The lights in the viewfinder blink uh, or like some, there's two little LEDs. They light up or blink to mm-hmm. signify different things. And like, I, frankly, I don't remember what they're supposed to mean. <laughs> what, and like, yeah, I'm not carrying the manual around with me either. Right. So like, I don't know, yeah. you know, not intuitive. Put, put like a label or something on the light, you know, or I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, hmm. other than that, you know, it's pretty good. It's very light, you know. Um, shooting full frame is weird because I'm used to shooting landscape orientation most of the time, uh, which means I got to flip the camera most of the time. Hmm. Uh, so that took some getting used to. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It seems like it. If if I do well with it, it seems like it might be a good option for, you know, a, a carrying around town sort of camera. Sure. Um, Which is yeah. kind of the point of it, I feel like. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And also, I don't know, you know, there's framing lines in the viewfinder, and I don't know if I line things up right for the given, you know, distance or whatever, focus range and all that. Yeah, I guess that, we'll, but... we'll find out when you get around <laughs> to actually processing them. Yep. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Nice. Well, I've uh been doing some bird photography in my backyard. We've got mm. a bunch of birds lately. Mm-hmm. I we put oh, up nice. like uh string lights back there that go between, you know, like the roof of the house and the fence just to like light up the backyard. Mm-hmm. And that that seems to have given the birds a perfect place to sit. Yeah. So I got a picture the other day that's pretty good of a hummingbird taking a nap on the wire. Mm-hmm. We get other birds coming through. We get possums and whatnot. That's kind of what I've been doing with photos. But most of my time has been doing 3D printing and, and, and things like that. Yeah. <sighs> I got a 3D printer, and the thing about that is, you know, you can just print yourself some little guys whenever you want. You sure can. <laughs> you can just you can just think of a guy and print him out. So, <laughs> guys, no one has all sorts no of one stuff. has imagined yet. <laughs> I've been printing all sorts of little articulated whatevers because yeah. it's cool. I'm probably going to go through like three rolls of PLA before I make anything useful. But that's fine. It's fun. It's all sort of part of my plan for this year of getting back into creating things. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do overall. I want to make stuff. So I've also set up like a workbench in my office. I pulled in an old workbench and... I've got a whole setup going over there. You could do DSLR scanning on that workbench, I assume. I could, yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) 
<laughs> the thing that the thing that I haven't had in a while is just like a space where I can put stuff a that I'm working on. Well, I have a space cave. for me. <laughs> I have I have my own office. I, I have I have a man cave, but what I haven't had is a place where I can like leave a, something in progress. Mm, um, yeah, because mm-hmm. you know I yeah. could use my desk, but I work from here, so I have to clean it right and i could use yeah. the dining room table but same thing i need to you know use you that on that right so yeah. i can't just leave a half done project out anywhere but just do just do like i do and leave a half done project out on your dining room table anyway <laughs> well i don't want to solder on my uh i don't want to solder on my dining room table well seems maybe what's well, a little lead one. you know <laughs> well i only use i only use unleaded solder actually oh okay yeah what uh, octane? No, I, have, I have both. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I don't know. I just want to, I want to be more creative this year and like do stuff. And this gives me a space to, to do that in. That's sort mm-hmm. of the idea there. Do you feel like that was the big thing blocking you from, from being more creative? I think so. Honestly, okay. just Damn. having somewhere to, I, I definitely fall into this trap of, of feeling like in order to do something, I have to do the whole thing. Oh yeah. Right. I can't, I can't. Are you saying you don't have to? (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) I can't only do part of a thing. Right. And this, this stops me from editing batches of photos too half the time. Like if I go to a sports event, I have 2000 pictures to go through. I'll sit on that for weeks because I feel like I have to go through all of them all at once. And I don't, yeah. but I feel like I have to. You know, I, I think of the adage, you know, never half-ass, you know, two things, only whole-ass whole one thing. And it's yeah. like, well, but for, like, personal stuff, it's yeah, okay. Personal stuff, you know? it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so now I have this area that I'm hoping I can work on things that are that need to, you know, sit. And I don't have to do all of it all at once. I can work on it in little bits. That's the idea. Yeah. So we'll see if that... We'll see if that pans out, I guess. Pretty soon you'll be like me. You'll just have like the remnants of projects that you sort of started on and then gave up on just everywhere. You know? Oh, I have. I have. I can't tell you how many like little development boards I have just lying around. <laughs> I have a, a fishing tackle box from college that is full of half done projects. Mm-hmm. And at this point, they're so out of date. <laughs> I don't even know if I can use them anymore. Yeah, yeah. I should actually probably open that. I think there's several lithium batteries in there. <laughs> <laughs> should probably, should probably all get inflated those out. up now. Yeah, I'm yeah, certain. Maybe they a good have. idea. Yeah, but see, now this gets me into the mindset of, oh, I, well, I have a 3D printer now. I need a laser cutter, obviously. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, you also need a resin 3D printer so you can get high detail. That I actually, I actually probably will get one of those well the <laughs> <laughs> they're quite a bit less expensive now they used to be very very costly but now you can get them <clears throat> for a thousand bucks this is true but to get one that has like decent build volume i feel like is still pretty expensive yeah but yeah that's but a fun need, one because it's know. smelly and uh you know potentially yeah well i've put the you, 3d you printer out a lot in the garage, of liquids so it's fine it's out it's out in the garage yeah Right. That's the splash zone. You know, if stuff gets out there, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need a laser cutter. You need a uh, you need a CNC. Uh, yeah, so you can do like wood carving. You know, without actually. Well, that's you know. sort of what I would think about is getting one of the. I think the Glowforge can do dual duty. It can sort of be mm-hmm. both. There's Our mutual some friend that... Sam has a, has had a CNC like on his wish list for a very long time. I don't remember what yeah. it is, but it's quite good. I guess I basically use this like a Makita router, but yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just hearkening back to school and I guess I'm just wishing I had the tools available (laughs) to me now that that I had. then. We had like, I mean, we're an engineering school. We had everything and you could just, if you did the like trainings, you could just go and use them. Mm -hmm. I could use a, you know, half a million dollar Haas milling machine to make stupid shit if I wanted to. Yeah. I could use CNC tables. I could use a 100-watt laser cutter. Like, yeah, that right. was nice. Yeah. I'll drop a recommendation in-, in here for a YouTube channel that I've been watching that sort of inspired me to do all of this. 
mm-hmm. um, Marius Hornberger. If you haven't seen him, mm. he's he's great. Um, he's a little German boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to describe him. In, in theory, there's a maker space near me that has all of that stuff, but they have yeah. been, uh, if you go to their website for like their workshop membership, you know, it has said, we are currently revising our workshop membership plans. Please stay tuned for like right. several years now. So, okay. Well, they're not doing not, that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. Do I, what does that mean? I don't quite get it because they still are like having their, um, like open tours and their tool orientation Hmm. like classes. So I don't know, you know, like maybe you just have to go in there and do it. Yeah. Maybe they just forgot. Maybe they forgot the password to their website. I need to, well, that could be too. Yeah. I need to, you know, I need to learn how to use the CNC plasma cutter. Yeah, Uh, you do. You know, you need to cut quarter inch steel. They have a shop bot CNC router that uh, that might be worth looking into. How much is a shop bot? Shop bot CNC. Shop bot. Oh, shop there's a little bot. desktop one, twenty four by eight. Ooh, this is almost as expensive as a R one. Yeah, but somehow less than I was expecting for what it is. Yeah, because this is like a <laughs> this is like a real CNC. Like this is a this is legit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's got the vacuum yeah. hold down. It's got dust collection. Yeah. Yeah. This thing is legit. Yeah. But this Marius guy, um, he nice. makes a lot of his own tools. Mm. Uh, so I... he, he made um, a, a reciprocating belt sander. Mm-hmm. Just, just built one himself. Uh, okay. <laughs> he built uh, an auto flattening jig for like large pieces of wood that just mm. you put the wood in it and it goes back and forth and flattens it out. Well, yeah, um, we he... call that a, a planer typically or a jointer depending on. No, but it's it's <laughs> not it's not precision. It's just for oh, okay. like you take like a whole, you know, unfinished piece of timber and run it through. It. Uh, yeah, um, he built a auto tool changer for his CNC. Just on his own. A man who has a lot of time on his hands, it seems. I, was, I, I get the feeling this is just. What I guess he this does. is just what happens in Europe. You have a lot yeah. of time. You have a lot of free time. He jealous. built uh, a gantry for his camera in his lab, which is pretty clever. Hmm. He built this like sliding gantry on the ceiling, so you can put his camera can be in basically any position in the workshop, just on this sliding nice. gantry. Yeah, but. His his like watching him do this stuff made me realize like oh you know I have a degree in engineering <laughs> <laughs> I, I I could do this stuff I know how to do this so that's my yeah. that's my plan is to to do more do more stuff like this well you know keep us posted and it lets me order a bunch of magnets from Amazon so that's fun too <laughs> <laughs> well yeah this has been uh, you know. Episode uh, 19 of the official Canon podcast. Join <laughs> us next week when we'll be discussing uh, new Canon rumors. Uh, you know, maybe some uh, maybe some lenses, things of that nature. I don't know. Anyway, goodbye. Goodbye.